like, let me bite my mom's foot, bitch. <laughs> Jeez, nice. that's how we start, start the show. That's right. <laughs> good. That's a good yeah. way to start the show. That's right. That's a good precursor. I never right. said well, I was so- on that note. We're live, so we are live. Original guy to Spooky Empire. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, hey fam, gonna- what's up? Yeah, our show is actually going to be a little more regular now. Now that we're getting closer to the show. Uh, We got a lot to talk about tonight, Uh, so let's just get into the disclaimer. First and foremost, we are not official Spooky Empire staff, which means we can get away with saying whatever the fuck we want because we are not actual staff. So if you have a problem with what we say, don't take it to be a problem with what we say. You can go khaki fishing for my one-eyed trouser trout. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of bait does that take? A master? (laughs) A master bait? Very, very good, sir. You (laughs) pop. It's going to be that kind of night. And also, just so you know, we say all sorts of bad words when we talk about adult topics to get the kids out of the room unless you want them scarred for life. There we go. And official information, always spookyempire.com and official affiliated social media. Hi. I got Malibu and pineapple here. Rob, how you doing? I'm well. Thank you for asking. So you, you got a friend there, I see. Yeah, I do. I have uh, Richie Simmons. Richie. His friends let him call him Richie. Richie. His friends call him Dick. <laughs> Dicky. <laughs> Dicky. Dicky Simmons. Yes. Little yeah. Dicky Simmons. Dick Simmons. Renaming. We all love Dick. So, what are you drinking tonight? This is a drink of my own. This is a key lime pie float. Mm. This is a uh, lime seltzer with lime rum, graham cracker sprinkles on here. It's. Oh man, that sounds fucking good. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it really is. It sounds fat, is what it sounds. I'm on board. It's just one. Yes. Carly, wonderful to see you back. Our favorite redheaded. Hi. Hi. Yes. Briefly caught in this whirlwind. Uh, I am drinking water because I've been dehydrated all day because I have been working. (laughs) I would like to have something more fun, but. No, hydrating is is number one rule. It's spooky. Yes. Very important. Yeah. When you see some. Yeah. When you see somebody passed out at 5 p.m., you're like, oh, they didn't hydrate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time it'll ruin your weekend. Sure Robbie, will. wonderful to see you hey, back. What's up, guys? How's it going? Robbie, our, our local wino. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tonight I'm drinking beer. Ooh, <laughs> pushing it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, also trying to hydrate a little bit because, yeah, it's been hot. So I figured beer, that'll do it, right? It's mostly water, right? It's been fucking insane outside, man. Oh my God. <laughs> And we have a special guest with us this evening. If you guys have been at Spooky, uh, you have seen his, oh God, so many friggin' costumes. Yeah. You know, before I introduce him, you know what, uh, Rob, what's your favorite costume of his? Um, <laughs> like, pause for dramatic no, effect. I can't remember the name, but from 13 Ghosts. Oh, the hammer. Hammer, thank you. That uh, was yeah. friggin' badass. That's actually, that's actually my favorite one to wear. That is and my you know favorite what? one. It's funny. I had I, I know I had seen you many times, but that's the first per- time I actually like. Oh, that's that guy is that guy. Yeah, uh, Carly. What about you? Oh, I love his new, uh, just like Doctor Zombie because he's so funny in it. <laughs> like that's that's why it's my favorite. It's just because constant jokes, just nonstop, has an entire list that just keeps going. Cracks me up. Oh yeah, he's a showman. All right, that's for damn sure. Robbie, what yeah. about you? Um, I love the Titanic group that was awesome that was so amazing yeah. such as uh, it's beautifully put together in the makeup and i know the characters more dead but um it's just it was beautiful i really love that one and, and i just say, yeah just liz taylor like just there's not not, not worthy just that's true enough. the liz taylor is like i have to look at it like this because i'm like there's there's no way that that's not actually yeah, the exactly. actor no, you the, the funniest here the funniest thing about that is one of Danielle, Danielle did that for her final at VAMP when she went to VAMP uh, for, for makeup and prosthetics. And when she did it, one of her friends, who's also a very good makeup artist, it took her like three months to realize there was silicone prosthetics on my face. She said, she wrote her three months later. She's like, I didn't even realize you had silicone prosthetics all over his face. And I was like, wait, did she just think I had baggy skin all over my face? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I don't know if I should be insulted or not. <laughs> well, they, they were applied expertly. That's why I yeah. didn't know it was you for yeah. a long time. 
Yeah. And, and by the way, in case y'all don't know, Eric Battaglia, round of applause, everybody. Thank you guys for having we're, me. We're the, I'm excited. Yeah, we're the cause. And so, yeah, what, what are you drinking tonight, Eric? Vodka and orange juice, but it's Lux Silvana, which is a potato vodka. Oh. Because I have a weed allergy. Oh. I have a yeast allergy, so I yep. feel you. So, got to be careful what you drink. God, it sucks getting old, doesn't it? <laughs> Seriously. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Okay, so Eric, when did, when did you start doing like these costumes? How'd you get into all this? So How'd you get into spooky? I am I am part of a dynamic duo. If if this was a dynamic duo, I would definitely be the Robin of the group. Danielle does about 80 to 85% of the costuming. I help out with a little bit of this stuff here and there. I bring the characters to life a lot of times, but she has taught me so much about costuming over the years. Um so it's funny. We used to do things for our kids' birthday parties back in the day when they were younger. She would throw a costume together. We'd whip something up and build stuff. We built a, a pirate ship in our backyard one time for the kids for their birthdays. That's awesome. Because um, wow. they wanted a pirate birthday. So my buddy and I built the ship and she did a bunch of costuming and stuff. And when we first moved to Florida, because I was in the military for 23 years. So I was a Marine. We moved around a lot and we were never in a big city like Tampa. So we had never heard of comic cons. We heard of the, the one out in in Los Angeles and, and yeah, San, Diego. San Diego. And so we were like, Oh, we, we know about that one. But when we, when we got to Tampa, somebody was like, Oh, Hey, you guys going to the comic-con this weekend? We're like, wait, there's a comic-con here. I didn't know they were all over the place. And this was in 2013. So in four days, she whipped together four different costumes in four days. Wow. Uh, We'd love to see her it. First Ursula that she ever did too. Oh, nice. uh, complete with stuffed legs and everything. It was amazing um jedi robes uh indiana jones and i think my son went as ash ketchum so from there it turned into we need to expand on it and do what we can and we became con junkies and then we found spooky um through another group of people and it's our favorite con that's the only one i actually like to go to anymore it's still <laughs> intimate that's the difference like we all know megacon is coming up next week yeah. Um, and, it, and I have referred to it to everybody here that it is the Walmart of conventions. When it used to be owned by Beth and her family, it felt a lot different. It was more intimate and smaller. Absolutely. And it's now it's, yeah. yeah. It you know, we had the luxury, hands, but. our first Megacon was with the mother and the daughter and it Beth was Beth and her daughter, yeah. And then the next year they sold it. And I, and I totally get it because it's so much work and is. Beth and her husband were ready to retire. They wanted to move up north, which up north for us is still just Georgia. But um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when we say up north, it's like, it's right yeah. there anyway. So, uh, so she, she wanted to retire and they made a decent amount of money. But now I think it's owned by the same one that has like owns part of New York Comic Con and all those other big box Toronto, comic ones. There's a bunch of them, yep. But one of and the biggest Canada, they're based out of Canada. They're not. Yeah. Even good, yeah, they don't give a shit. And one of the things that I hate is if something happens, you could have family murder. Like, too bad. You're not getting your ticket money back. We don't give a shit. Yeah. And then everything that's sold there, nothing is original. That's why I love spooky, because everything seems to be custom. You can't get it on Amazon. It's really cool, in my opinion. You can't beat the vendors at spooky. You can't absolutely beat the vendors at spooky. Yeah, but we're, we're going to get into Megacon in a bit because Lord knows we have a lot to say about Megacon that's coming uh -huh. up next week. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. But uh, all right. So, I mean, first off, I mean, Eric, what do you guys have anything planned for Spooky yet? Or is um, you keeping that under wraps? Or? We're going to wait because we want to see all the announcements first because, you know, we like to tailor some of our, our costumes. Like when we did 13 Ghosts, we did 13 Ghosts because Matthew Lillard was going to be there. And he fucking um, just freak the fuck out absolutely and then when we did we, we did clue because uh chris was there so we were like you know we want to try and tailor it to, to people that are going to be there to make it not only special for us but special for them because matthew lillard was was really taken back by our group doing something for him and being there so we could see him um and we got to talk to him for like a half an hour at the vip party it was amazing he's such a down-to-earth guy i i hope they bring him back I, I, I yeah, really too. he's somebody that i hate that i missed i've heard nothing but good things from you guys about him i would oh, love amazing. With the freddie prince with the freddie prince jr announcement i'm like please please bring Matthew yes. Lillard back baby. Yeah. the dance has to be done the yeah. dance has to be done the dance is iconic all right well i mean the other question i have is as someone who i mean models all of danielle's creations and everything uh cosplaying as opposed to becoming the character 
for you, like if, if you're costuming as something, what are like the biggest tips in your mind to take it to the next level as that character? Um, so for me, t- for me, becoming the character is different for, for everybody. It's going to be a little different, but when I become the character, I try and do the voice. So like we're, we're getting ready. We're going to be doing Korg. So I've been practicing doing the voice. So I'm going to be like, Oh, hi, my name's Korg. Uh, made of rocks. It's not a problem. Unless of course you're made of scissors, <laughs> Hello, a little rock, paper, scissors joke there. So, um, <laughs> I have an affinity for voices like this started when I was a kid. So like uh, I had a friend who used to actually sound like Sylvester Stallone. So we used to just make fun of him all the time and be like, I didn't do it. You know, like, you know, here, Perfect. You know, Your King there, Shark man. costume is done. Right. So so I, I practice and I try to get mannerisms down. So if you're going to be a character, watch what they do. Pick out some mannerisms that they do, um, some key phrases that they say to kind of feel like you're part of the character. Um, when it comes to costuming, pay attention to the small details. It's the little details when you're building a costume that really takes it above and beyond. Uh, you, you know, when we did the hammer, you know, she put the nails all over the place and we paid attention to the nails and, and all that stuff. Um, but little details just make a costume that much better and more, more believable. So. I completely agree with you, especially because we have a thing in the um, the industry for theme parks. It's called the 20 foot rule. Uh, all of the guests are 20 feet away. So details are not as important because they're 20 feet away or it's in the dark or there's smoke or there's lights or anything. But at a con, you don't have the 20 foot rule. So the details are very, very important. Right. They come right up. At, and I'll tell you the funnest or funnest, the funnest, the funnest, the funnest, the, 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 funnest, the best thing that we did was when we did zombie Titanic. We were trying to figure out because I had this giant ship wheel and I'm like, I really don't want to carry this thing around all day. It's going to get cumbersome and heavy. And we were trying to spitball. We were like, hey, what if we glue it to the glove and just glue the whole thing to we wet the glove down and then we put a bunch of hot glue and stuff all around it so it wouldn't burn my hand. And then when it by the time it got done and cooled off, I could slip my hand right out of there. Ooh, so oh, awesome. I put the glove in there and it's li- basically like I'm just doing this the entire time. Nice. So I don't have to grip it. I don't have to do anything. And if I get tired, I can just take my hand out of the glove. That's an <laughs> awesome hack. I will tell you a little thing that I learned too, because E6000 takes forever to adhere, but it lasts a lot longer. Yeah. Put E6000 down first, then put hot glue on top of it. The hot yes. glue makes it hold on to it until the E6000 adheres. And then that you're not just brilliant. holding a piece there for fucking ever. That yeah, is- that's brilliant. I, should- I have a question. I know this is kind of out of place, but... Um, for the heat, how do you do for the, when you're working with Warbla, for example, or something that's a, a thermal plastic, how do you do for the, for, for like, for example, for straps or if you do rivets or whatever, how do you do for it to stay? Because when it heats up in the sweat and you're like walking or whatever. So luckily, it, sorry to interrupt it. Luckily yeah. for Warbla, it doesn't have that low of a heat tolerance. And the way I've gotten stuff to stick is either by actually putting a hole in it and putting it through like a real grommet because it is thin yeah. enough and sturdy enough to do that. Or I use more warbler. Like for my um, breastplate that I did, I had a strap that went around the back and I just took warbler and got it real gummy and put my snap in like that and then just let it dry. And it yeah, totally and held onto that, it. I did that and it was it was like a, that corset piece for the sea monster. And it ended up just after like wearing it for like four hours in Florida. No way. Um, the straps ended up popping off because it, the, oh. the hot glue and the warm got hot and it got like really like bendy did, and twisty. So did like, you score it on each no, side? I don't think it did. I no, scored the warbler on each heated, side and then superheated it. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know, maybe we've done the else. same trick that you were talking about is you take extra little pieces of warble and heat them up because the, the hotter it gets, the more it gets sticky. So you can <laughs> basically make it like a warbler glue and then put it on the back of it. And that way you have like an adherence between the two pieces that, cause if you're doing a grommet, you can't get it that hot because you're good. You don't want to lose the shape of whatever you're doing. So if you're making a grommet that that's, that's that big, you can't heat it up to the point where it's going to get super sticky, but you can make another scrap piece, make it super hot, use it and brush it on the back of it and then stick it. And then you, you kind of have that as a nice barrier in between the two. And I will always, always suggest in Florida because hot glue does have that low of a melting point. Yeah. Never use hot glue in an important part of your costume. If it's something way up on your hat that your body heat isn't going to touch, that's fine. Yeah. But if you're putting it directly anywhere on your body, that shit's going to melt right off of you. Yeah. Absolutely. 
We, it's trial and error. A lot of this it's stuff, people yeah, still, I, we learn because of the things that end up falling oh, yeah. out in the middle of mega con. Yeah. When you have an epic <laughs> failure at a con and you're in the middle of a con and you're running around trying to find something, you'd be like, who has hot glue in their room that I can use right now? I actually it have a question. Be, it should be almost everybody because I mean, yes. I always go prepared. No, oh, oh my God. Robbie is the best roommate. So freaking prepared. It's like unreal. I love staying with Robbie and Nate. Um, I do have to ask you, Eric, because the thing I've run into, Robbie, is kind of what you were saying. It's like piggybacking off of that. I've gotten to a point now, and Demi, too, you, you've had this happen, too. You have the costume. You've made it. You've done all of it. And then you put it on. You're like, fuck, this is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So oh. much of the heavy stuff you wear, it's like your tolerance. And I do see you when you're drinking and having it's fun. Beauty. It is beauty. I, but, Demi, you've seen me at, at Dragon Con yeah. just walking in the foot, like taking shit off, going, I can't do it anymore. I'm yeah. too fucking hot. It's too uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. How do you how do you manage that because that's my thing i can't do it anymore i'm too old <laughs> i being a marine for 23 years i have done okay uncomfortable <laughs> shit oh, oh, okay. so it's really like this to me is like oh, i've done worse than this but didn't but, jim carrey literally get marine training to wear the grinch outfit like that's yeah, how they, they train okay I so that tracks you, I, so I've done the Grinch. Um, we did it for IMATS back in, I think it was like 2018 or 2000. Yeah, I think it was 2018. And I had Scalera contacts in and I had them in oh my God. From 10 o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. And, and then your whole eyeball came out too. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> it was bad, but yeah. um, there's a lot of like, okay, I got to suck it up a little bit and just kind of power through and you just find that happy place that you need to be in. When, when I do the hammer, that costume does not breathe. I mean, so that's, that was basically a homemade muscle suit out of couch foam, latex, a whole bunch of stuff. And that's it, so impressive doing it, that anatomy like that is so hard. Like it cheers. fits so good, but it does not breathe. So, um, I lose like 10 pounds when I'm in it for a day nice oh, yeah. so that, my that, diet regime yeah. is being yeah. a monster when we go in to do cord next week i have a feeling i'm going to lose about 10 or 12 pounds uh which would be great so but oh, not again. oh yeah no that best diet to get ready for spooky is just wear a costume to <laughs> well because we would hope right in the times when spooky happens it's supposed to be in spring and in fall but florida's always like guess what it's still summer yeah. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. When, when Robbie five degrees every fucking day with a hundred. Yes. And I have to give Robbie props because she wore this stunning vinyl outfit that I was just like, oh my God, madam. But it was 900 degrees outside. Yeah. She still did it. But yeah. looking, yeah, looking yeah, yeah. sexy. No, as we were inside. Thank you. We were inside. <laughs> so for our art. Whole time. And also like, I, I do this a lot. I'll like, you know, just air out get it yeah. kind of yeah that's yeah, smart yeah, actually yeah yeah for sure i need to make something for us big titty ladies it's like an under boob oh, thing oh, that God, catches yes, the sweat please. but is also cooling yes, because nothing's wet. worse it's already hard to have the sweat under here but having it trickle down your back all the way into your ass crack is like <laughs> that's the real horror fucking worse dude it's not <laughs> pretty something, carly it's here's what I, i'm surprised they haven't made you have shirts with wicking right where mm -hmm. it brought why don't they make bras like that that's what i'm saying and i want something that naturally wicks because when it wicks it cools and i'm like wow. yes that's what i need i've actually been working on a prototype for something if i get time away from all these halloween costumes i'm making for events and i'll test it out on these lovely ladies that's and your wife funny. give me give me sweat wicking please yes yes, yes please it's important. You well, guys Demi is the one years ago who taught me about the deodorant under the boobs. Uh -huh. Saved yep. my freaking life. Yep. Don't Stop the chafing because trust me, these may be pretty, but no. It, the it, it, first this is time <laughs> as a big titty woman, pain. the first time you get heat rash under there, you're like, I'm dying. You have oh, yeah. no idea what's going on. Sticking ice underneath them. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. not a pretty sight. Oh, being, being big boobed is a heavy burden. <laughs> literally fucking is. people don't know the shit we go through but spe speaking of costuming one of the things we did this week is uh we stopped by aeo studios and if you guys don't know about aeo studios they're always spooky they do amazing absolutely amazing stuff and apparently they had just gotten in uh and i think and, and rob can correct me if i'm wrong i said i think they're the only florida retail that actually has it that is, sounds uh, right because i was ordering it from georgia yeah so they actually have it locally now so if you're doing costuming 
uh, false shape is something there. They showed us this absolutely gorgeous, and we'll post it on the, uh, the website, but uh, they had this gorgeous like collar and it was so incredibly lightweight. And we started talking about it. And, you know, I mean, well, Carly's the expert, but I'm, I'm going to hand this over to Eric because it's like, we're, we're getting to know Eric here. Uh, that, well, false shape. What what is it? It's like a fabric adhesive. Tell us about it. it. it it's very similar to Warbla. It's it's a thermoplastic. It's and like Carly said, we were talking about it earlier. It's it's thermoplastic, but you said it's very low heat resistant, right, Carly? <laughs> So when it's actually out, like I used to work for Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida, and I made all the stilt costumes for like the past decade. And we would make collars and the collars would be very stiff and full of Viagra. But as soon as that heat hits, where the heat is here and the sun coming down on it, yeah. it just begins to wilt. It does have a lot of really good applications. Like say I was making Demi or Danielle or Robbie a corset and I wanted it to really keep its shape. Faw shape is perfect for that because yeah. you heat it almost to the point where it's paper thin, you stitch it like a normal outfit, and then you heat it the rest of the way and it will stand up on its own. Like think old Marilyn Monroe outfits when they took her dress off and it just stood up. It can do that, but it's not actual metal. It's not actual corseting. But when you're talking about armor, I still suggest a heavier thermoplastic like yeah. Warbler. Because most likely it has a low heat index, which means that even your body heat may may ruin the shape, and that's right. it'll warp that's it. What yeah, we were talking yeah. about earlier is you know knowing where you're at and and what the environment's like. You know, like when Danielle runs foam, being in Florida, she has to do it differently. There's no there's no set standard on on running poly foam because your temperature, your air air pressure, all of that matters. So if you go to a higher elevation, just like baking, same thing with costuming, with thermoplastics or anything else, it's going to be affected by by the different area you're in. So trial and error is is a good way to do it, and you figure it out and. Don't it's just unfortunately an expensive trial and error for a lot mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. Like when oh. I first started working with leather, thank God for Josh Todd. Yeah. I did not understand because most fabrics have like a weave and a weft and you have to cut it at a certain one or you get it on the diagonal and it stretches mm -hmm. and it warps everything. I didn't understand that the edge of the leather where they cut it is super stretchy and I fucked up a bunch of stuff. But uh, thank you, Josh Todd, wherever you are, my friend. We miss you, Josh. Come back to Florida. Love you, he, Josh. He's in Idaho or Iowa doing mountain shit. No, he's in Utah and yeah, he does do movies every now and then. He just got LASIK. He's like uh, doing archery again. He just did a big, so there's a combat convention <laughs> where they just sell a bunch of weapons and, you know, he makes all that cool stuff for Sterling Armory or whatever yeah. it's called. And so he made a bunch of swords and went out there and made some money. That's my man. He's Love so him. Hot. Good for him man. He's so hot. He's so hot. And he's oh super God. happy he's right now. I heard mm -hmm. he's doing really well with this lady. Like I got nothing but love for Josh Todd. Absolutely. No, he's fucking fantastic. We miss him. But, uh, but yeah, but so AEO studios for anything that you want to get for your costume. Awesome. I mean, now is the perfect time to get it. So you can actually play around and experiment and figure I'm out. I'm looking that up now. Yeah. You sold me. I'm telling you, man, it's like, they're fantastic. So definitely look them up. I mean, I'm going to be getting some stuff done there. So I, I personally recommend them. AEO Studios, definitely check them out. Yeah. Um, Demi, what Mike, other stuff Mike's, Mike's in the chat. Just want to say, what's up, Mike? Big Daddy Mike. Yeah. Mike! Big Daddy Mike! Mike. Mike. Yeah, so, Mike. yeah, and hello, everyone in the chat. Sorry, I, that's the producer's job, not mine. Okay, so Eric, you were about to say. I was going to ask you what else do they sell there? Besides, Ev everything uh, FX. All the things. They sell all the things. Everything there. from fangs to prosthetics to blood to resin pieces. I mean, you name it, they've got it. That's good. Also, yeah, do you guys remember the, uh, uh, oh my God, where was this? I think it was at the Carib, um, the um, Audrey 2. Life's yes. Audrey 2. That's AEO. Oh, interesting. I did not uh, know no, that. They, they, they like they will also do a lot of masks. Like they're they're custom designing masks, and there's yeah. some that they'll mass produce or not mass produce, but some that they will reproduce. Yes, yeah. that's that's the important uh, term there. Yeah, we got a, a little peek into the studio, it, and it looks like they have hair and wigs. makeup supplies too, like hair and mm -hmm. wig supplies, which is good. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything you need, and and like I said, they're they're fellow spooky fam, so it's all about supporting fellow spooky fam, right? All right. Well, we started this earlier, but uh, I, I know that Carly and Eric are both going to be at, at MegaCon next week. <laughs> let, let, let's talk about MegaCon a little bit, only because <laughs> we, we are skin elitists. Let's, let's face it. And as we said, MegaCon has become the Walmart of cons ever since it was bought up by Big Brother. Um, <laughs> personally, 
I'm laughing because Megacon has this tendency, unlike Spooky, Megacon will pack their guest list with like a hundred people because mm-hmm. nine times out of 10, at least 75% of them cancel. Yep. Lord of the Rings canceled. And then and, uh, there was another big cancellation, I don't remember, but apparently their big headline, uh, Brendan Fraser just canceled a week before the convention. I'm I mean, here. I'm sure there's a, a secondary reason, but shooting a Scorsese film, I hope that's, you know, actually no, happening that week. It, totally it worth is. it. But for us who love him and want nothing but the best for him, I'm like, if Florida gives him COVID, I'm going to personally fucking stab every Absolutely. one of those people. Couldn't agree more. But it's just, it's funny watching the drama, knowing that Megacom does this every year and they take your money and they don't give anything back. And this is why we say come to Spooky because nine times out of 10, we get maybe what one cancellation a year. If yes, that, if that. that I mean, yeah. So it's, sorry, guys. I was just going down memory lane with MegaCon, and I forgot because <laughs> one of my first boyfriends worked for CrossGen Comics. Taking it back for anybody who remembers CrossGen, I forgot CrossGen briefly owned MegaCon. What? Yeah, in 1999, they bought it from from Liz from Elizabeth in Beth Wydera. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then Wydera bought the convention back from the failing cross trends what it says it was probably a fail that's why she was like let me take this back well she was friends that's how i met her was through cross gen because i knew all the guys who worked there uh like jimmy and maury and justin (laughs) but continue on sorry i was just like what they owned it for a while i'm trying to figure out who owns it now What's it's, up, Rob? It's, called, it's called Fan Expo, I think, is the, the name it's of the company. Sold to Informa. It is Fan Expo. You're absolutely right. It's yeah, Fan Expo but the it. actual company is called Informa. Fan Expo yeah. Canada, Fan Expo Dallas. That's what they do, mm-hmm. but the company is called Informa, which yeah. sounds dystopian as fuck. It does. It does. Very, very much so. <laughs> it does. Take your Informia, Robbie. <laughs> Informa <laughs> reminds me of something else. Um, Side effects include. <laughs> So has anybody watched Doom Patrol with Brendan Fraser in it yet? Yes, love it. Okay. If love you it. haven't seen it, whether you're a comic book fan or not, just watching Brendan Fraser in this show is 10 times worth mm-hmm. it. He's a freaking robot. He's awesome. He is literally a robot. He's literally a robot. Yeah, I am 100% on board for Brendan. I love Brendan. I'm hoping we bring him to Spooky. You know, I'm doing the course, good thing. He's doing the thing with Scorsese and DiCaprio and good for him. And that's fantastic. But if you're going to go to MegaCon, don't go for the guests. Yeah. Because this is what they do every yeah. oh, year. Okay, but I, let, I, I agree with you. For. But yeah, exactly. Because for? the booths are shit yeah. you can get from Amazon. No one's making custom stuff. Maybe Artist Alley. If you're a big comic book fan yeah, yeah. and there's an artist you want to see. But other than that, there's no good parties on site. It's not like Dragon Con where you just wander into a party and go, oh shit, this is awesome. There's a rave right here. It's like they're doing a, a Lord of the Rings, you know, like actual panel. And then right next door is a giant rave. And then there's a bar here and a restaurant here. It's all right there. Megacon is like, oh, walk 300 miles in your yeah. hot costume to get to yeah. any party that you also have to pay extra aside from your actual ticket to get yeah. into. I mean, come yeah. on. It's, the it's intimacy of spooky is what sold Danielle and I. Um, the Intimacy went, is perfect word for that. She yeah. went to spooky before I did. And I came, when I, when I came back from Okinawa, was getting ready to retire. We went and did um, Zombie Titanic. It was the intimacy of it and the accessibility to the guests because you don't get that at megacon you can't walk straight up to the table and just start shooting the shit with the guest no you gotta pay money you you used to be able to a million years ago demi can probably tell you that i went to the very first megacon in 93 and it didn't used to be like this and and i agree when we went the first year it was a lot different setup and it changed. We were like, well, this is not it anymore. Like, this is not what I'm, I like. And then it's, 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 it's spooky. Yes. You just walk up to people at, sitting at their table and, and have a 10 minute conversation and they'll talk to you the entire time. And mm-hmm. at least four years ago, Dragon Con was like that as well, where you could just walk up. That's where I met George Takai and he was so nice. He and his husband, I just had like a 10 minute conversation with him. But yeah. at Megacon, I can't remember it being like that in the past decade. Okay, it's, so here's, oh. here's a funny thing. Danielle and I went to Dragon Con one time. We never made it to the floor. We, we, <laughs> we That's what happens at Dragon Con. I never saw the floor. I didn't see any of the guest tables. We we met Matt Smith from Doctor Who. That's awesome. Gillen, 
And I got to talk to Lloyd Kaufman for about a half an hour. Oh my God, That's a good he's one. Awesome. He's he so is amazing. Cool. He's so I heard he's a really nice guy. He's so so he is. And one of our friends actually was in his uh, movie, Return to Newcomb High. I got to see the premiere in Buffalo a few nice. years ago. I'm pretty sure they just reshot the Toxic Avenger. I'm They're pretty doing sure. doing it just- right now. They just yeah. got greenlit to go. No, I think they just wrapped because the oh, little kid they? that's in Lock and Key uh trimbly something yeah. he's just like and i just rapped on it and it's a toxic avenger and his little thing and i'm like that's all. i mean he might be done maybe the movie's still yeah. shooting but it's his part be, might I'm, be done i'm excited for it I yeah trauma it. getting getting the recognition it deserves is like oh, you yeah, can't beat it yeah rob keeps trying to say something i see him trying to butt in the moment is gone no <laughs> never gone get back rob no, I was just going to say the last time at MegaCon when you could approach fan tables, I, I do remember it um, 2013 because I think we actually, that's how you got to, we, we got to meet Tia Carrera at her table. Yes. And we just like, My girl crushed. Yeah, we, we did. Was she nice? Oh, she God, was yeah. 100% on board. I told her that, that, that she was my girl crush. She's like, oh my God, our girl crush is great. And we sat there for about 10 minutes talking about girl crushes. And we love it. We love to see it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and we had actually met her um, a couple years before, I guess 2010 at Dragon Con. That was my last one. And she was really sweet then, too. She, I mean, she's she's always been just super cool. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah. All right. So we got uh, new spooky guests that have been yeah. announced. Yes. First, uh, let's see. We got Oliver Robbins from uh, Poltergeist. And was he in Poltergeist, too? Yes, yes. he should have been. Yes. In the, in he the was in the second two. one, I think, yeah. too. More, more importantly, he was in Airplane, too. Yes, he, you know he, oh, right. he, he was a little I don't boy know. Who, had, who had scraps but the pup. I don't know if the proof of the picture is like actually recent, but he looks like he's done well. He doesn't look like he's like like some other I, child <laughs> guest that comes say. spooky <laughs> and look like the Walking Dead. I, mean, I, I can't believe that's a recent picture because he's got to be he's got to be around fifty. Yeah. And Even then, not, I, I'm just hoping it's not a whole lot of the classic drugs, yeah, alcohol, no. and, and I bad don't, choices. I don't think it doesn't seem like, like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a refreshing thing that will be. Yeah, seriously. I mean, so when it comes to child actors, I mean, you're pretty much like 70, 30 when it comes to, you know, but uh, I mean, like the only other one I can take it, Miko Hughes, who's absolutely fantastic. And he hasn't fallen down the Edward Furlong. Neither hole. has um, uh, Henry Thomas. He was he was. Oh great. yeah, Henry Thomas. There we go. Technically, oh, Drew Barrymore did it, and then she pulled herself out of it. Pulled so herself out. You, know, yeah. you know who's looking good? It. Soleil Moonfry, Punky Brewster. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. What a fucking yeah, sure. snack! Totally. Mm. Yes. I love Marnie. <laughs> She's amazing. What a fucking snack! I love it. Totally. <laughs> and for those of you that uh, slashers, we got C.J. Graham. So with CJ Graham, I think that brings us, let's see, we've got uh, Freddy Krueger, we've got Jason, we've got Michael Myers. Pinhead. Pinhead. Mm. And we've Pinhead. Pinhead. So we've got the four. So, I mean, that the panel for that should be outstanding. I always <laughs> missed him when he was there, and everybody knows that Pinhead is my um, my slasher of choice. Like, Hellraiser is, is the thing. Everybody has the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'm so sad because the year I dressed up and did the thing with you, I just kept missing him. It was a busy year that year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so those of you that are Jason fans, like I said, you know, that it, and I'm hoping they do the panel with the four of them. Cause I know, uh, I know Kane Hodder has done panels with Doug Bradley and Freddie before. So it's, it's quite possible. And then, That's true. yeah, we've got uh, Lisa Wilcox from, in my opinion, one of the best nightmares on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoyed three a lot. Actually, all those movies aged so much better she, she, than no, you would have thought. I rewatched all of them in a row, and the special effects, like we were saying, oh, mwah, beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Back when you did stuff more practical, it does actually age better. Yeah. They were Between well ahead of their time. Five. Agreed. Yeah, totally. No, she did, yeah. she was in a couple of them. They did kill her off, but she uh, she hung around for a while. Yeah, so. I have to say five is my second favorite because it's like everyone's got their favorite Freddy death, and for me. It's the one with the Roach Motel, which is fucking hilarious. If, you, if y'all, I don't know if y'all remember that. Spoiler alert. I still think one of my favorites is Primetime, bitch. Oh. That cracks yeah, me up. Everybody's. That one or the, the video game one? Demi, did you just say spoiler alert? Spoiler <laughs> I, I think we're Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Because we're somebody has oh, seen it yet. There's going to be somebody. Oh, it's the movie's only 30 years old. Yeah, a spoiler alert. Every, she got under a rock. Everybody. <laughs> 
And then the other announcement we have the cast of Terror Fire. Oh, that's Bobby's awesome. So excited for. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Those guys are just, and, and okay, guys, I'm sorry. Listen, I know this is going to sound crazy because we keep on saying it. Oh my God, this guest is so amazing. Oh my God, this guest is so amazing. Oh my God, this guest is, and it's like, it's, it gets really repetitive, but let's be honest, Spooky Empire brings top fucking notch people, all right? And they're not only, uh, talented artists and and all that but just really nice down to earth are we having fun with her pussy there <laughs> yes uh oh, and gently. the fire cast is like that you know, right there. There. Anyway. Yeah. are we talking about pussy now because i'm in <laughs> <laughs> but the but caveat the caveat of what you're saying robbie you're right and the good thing is because when you get slasher movies and um the the horror genre they're they're you're, you don't get a lot of a-list celebrities Mm-mm. but the but okay. list celebrities that we get we are endearing and we love them and we can't wait to see them well, absolutely so, absolutely and the other thing is too the people who do horror do it because they love it because you're not going to get the fame and fortune yep. as a celebrity yep. from doing that so people who produce horror and actually star in it they do it for the love of it um and that's why we have to love elijah wood because he is a huge a-list celebrity and early on in his career he's also a childhood actor who did well um but early on in his career he did lord of the rings he set for life and he's like i'm gonna open this weird fucking small horror production company and make the weirdest fucking movies with nick cage you've ever seen But back to the terrifier thing, you guys, if you have a chance to go and to Carly's point, okay, now these people are, are, are super talented. Damien Leon, he not only directed it, but he uh, um, does all of the special effects makeup, obviously with the team now, but that's I, crazy. The first ones, I know, and it's just fucking phenomenal. And you want to talk to somebody and have a conversation about special effects stuff, go talk to this fucking guy. And that's, we, I did that last time when we talked about blood, because if anybody's seen the terrifier, um, you'll notice that the blood is really fucking good oh it is very fucking I love, good i love good blood in a movie and uh this one has it this one has a special effects um spoiler alert that scene that one scene that everybody loves you know and How can you not? well <laughs> so good the, the scene um and you know they're sawing this girl in half and you can see the jiggle of her body in the you know in the special effects and he's like that should blew my mind like how do you do that like it's amazing it's Speaking okay. of, of blood, I didn't even realize, Robbie, how quickly that'll be a no for me on a horror film where I'm like, this blood looks terrible. And you know who does blood <laughs> awful? You yeah, know who does blood it's awful it's every red. fucking yeah. time? Every fucking time because he thinks it's cute is Tim Burton. Tim Burton has never done blood well. <laughs> it's neon red and it looks like shit every yeah. fucking time. It's got an orange tint to it at times. Hate it. Like, yeah, it's like, it's, it, it takes you right out of it. I understand No, that. I don't like that. I don't like that. So yeah, okay. so I like the blood and and I went up to Damien Leon and we talked a little bit about what kind of blood they use. And, and he was like super informative. He gave me the website. He's like children. Not only is it amazing, yeah. but it washes out. Okay, pause. I need that. Yeah. Because when we do blood on stage and they want us to have a cotton costume, what happens? The blood stains the costume and there's nothing. They're like, why can't you get it out? I'm like, cotton. Well, you dye. know what I like about that also is I'm, I'm one of those people like, you know, like Eric and Danielle and you guys, you know, I, I like my stuff to be authentic, right? So if I'm making a costume and I'm supposed to have blood splatter, okay? And it's, I want it to look consistent. But if I have three different types of uh, textures going on in my costume, mm-hmm. you know that if you do one type of blood, it's not going to look the same it's on every open. texture. So you hey, have Rob, to the chat out. says hi to you. Matt, <laughs> Matt Allen says hi to, to Rob <laughs> specifically. Oh, to Rob. Oh. To Rob specifically. Yeah, not us. We don't he doesn't give a shit that, about us. I'm fine. having technical difficulties because Facebook He's is mad. filled with cucks who are just too <laughs> no lies. busy. Yeah. There's, there's some people that don't like us, like so they end up reporting accounts and it's stupid, but whatever. Yeah, anyway. Keep my man down. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Bobby, oh, you uh, just changed my life with that whole blood comment. I didn't realize I was doing that. I'm like, yes, blood is like a dude. super component. The editing and blood. Like if, if a movie is badly edited in the first few minutes, I'm like. Done. yeah and then yeah. then there's the whole thing of what i was saying like you know so you want it to look fresh on an apron for example but it needs to permeate into your into whatever else you're wearing how do you get the blood on the apron to not transfer onto other things right yes because if you hug somebody 
Exactly. So here's a funny thing, Danielle. Oh my it's such Danielle's a mission. special it's effects. Such a difficult thing to accomplish, and I I found the last time I did it, I I did nail polish on the on the apron, and then I had to do a different type of blood and paint and acrylic and all these other sorts of shit on different parts of the costume. Just That's awesome, consistent. Robbie. I so know, Danielle's <laughs> Danielle's uh, special effects kit has like four different types of blood in there, so. Because you never know what kind of blood Dang, you get. I mean, oh, yeah. You can't just go to spirit. Why is that so sexy? That can, <laughs> can somebody, that was uh, just, mm, I like it. Yeah. No, I've got like three in my bathroom. So yeah, no, I completely understand. No, absolutely. And, and it's because of that. What do you kind of blood do you want? Do you want arterial blood? Exactly. Do you want, do you do you want it to, to, to dry? Do you want it to look green? I mean, it's, yeah. I think still, hands down, EBA, um, uh, European body art and be love them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. EBA is great for him. Yes. Yeah. Vibe. Most you mean vibe? Normal? No, not the vibe. It's blood, and it comes naturally in a blood, like in a medical mm -hmm. jar, and it's nice. alcohol based. And they have like three different shades, and it is the best blood that I've ever found. The only problem is if you put a lot of it on, it's difficult to take off later. Yeah. So I've gone. Oh I, no! I don't blood I better, so it doesn't bother me. Blood. I'm weird. And then I'm at work with fucking blood all over my fucking arms for like a week. And I'm like, I try. Well, just have to, try. <laughs> I have to interject again. Rob, um, you're bumming everybody out because apparently you look bored oh. according to the chat. <laughs> so uh, if you could just, if you could just liven it up, Buttercup. You, you know, ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. I know uh, how he can liven it up because honestly, if Rob was going to go see anybody at Megacon, they have John Lovitz. <sighs> I kid this you not. Know, John Lovitz. The Rob critic. wanted That's to go so meet John random. Lovitz. But I, you know what? You know John what? John me. hit Andy in the face that one time and it's because good. of the Phil Hartman thing. And I thought that was pretty fucking That's, big yeah, dick energy. Okay, that. first of all. If you if you say you got your ass kicked by John Lovitz, that's a really low bar. Yeah. John Lovitz Andy came in Dick swinging. Is maybe the only person that can say that. But second, I'm a huge fan of the critic. If anyone, I you know, it. back in 1994. 93 94 whenever that was on i loved it i have the dvd collection it's only it's barely two seasons um oh man the wedding singer god damn it the wedding singer he's <laughs> oh <on>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so clearly we love john lovitz yeah he's, well, he's good in everything I'm, he does he creeps me out but whatever but yeah, but uh, no, Master Thespian is what I would get from John. You know Lewis. he's yeah. been the devil. Spooky should have him. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> so, Petey, Good point. If you bring John Lovitz. I'll, Petey doesn't take DIP, any suggestions for him. guests at all. <laughs> you heard her. You heard her. She threw the gauntlet down right there. Listen, I'm going to stand up on this fucking soapbox again. Last podcast on the left is one of the most popular horror podcast of all time yeah. just on patreon donations alone they make eighty thousand dollars a month just on that not their merchandise not their tour not their yeah. anything eighty thousand a month and when mm -hmm. i was like oh you guys should bring like well their people can contact our people i'm like they don't even know who the fuck you are like yeah, i, I love spooky but when we're dealing with people who are doing like giant book tours and they're now releasing a comic book and they're doing tv they're not going to be like huh a random con in Orlando. I should call them. Like, come on, reach this out to them because they are great moment, guys. Yeah, this will be the one that breaks us. But they are chill enough that they might actually show up. Yeah. And I'm like, please, please, please. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been asking him for Udo Kier for ten years now. Oh my I, god, I, I know. Yeah, Udo Kier. Get Udo Kier out of his coffin long enough to get to Florida? Hey, no. <laughs> See those no. fighting words right there. No, Udo. No. That's what do you mean he's people. a vampire? That wasn't fighting words. Those were compliments. He's kind of getting up there in years. I mean, the guy like worked with Andy Warhol, so he's not very young. Yeah, those movies are fucking fantastic. <laughs> Love them so much. They're so weird. Yeah. Oh, I meant to uh, going back to uh, the the cast of Terrifier. Robbie is so is Nate going to bring his Terrifier back? He's going to bring us. Uh, I don't know, guys. We'll see. Um, this is, I, know this is kind of I want him to bring it back. Me. I'm like, oh, that'll be awesome. Uh, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. He's working that weekend. <sighs> Same. I'm going to have yeah. to be living vicariously through my friends. I oh, want you guys to send me, send me stuff. Maybe he'll let me. Maybe he'll let me put him in the costume. I don't know. I'd love to see it just to yeah. see him at the pool party freaking kids out because that would be yeah. absolutely just, amazing. So here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing, you guys. The first time we did it, Terrifier was not as popular as it is. I mean, it was like people were just starting to catch on and he was the only one at the entire 
in the entire convention that year. And it was creepy because of that. Like, it was like, holy shit. Because he was all by himself with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then Boris came out and hit herself with the van. And Boris came out and he dressed up as a clown too. And the van we took, we put, we did a Terrifier hood graphic on it. And we had candy in the van. I mean, it was this whole fucking thing. But then after that, it took off. So the next year, the, or the next convention, there was like, you know, half a dozen terrifying art, art the clowns. Doesn't matter. Nate, and then, is, and then, yeah, Nate but, is the terrifier. It was I have a question, floor. Robbie, because I heard about Terrifier through you and I watched it. And then I was watching an anthology and he was in that as well. And I can't remember the name of the anthology. Was it Hallow's Eve? Hallow's Eve. Oh, Hallow's Eve. Yeah, yeah. I remembered it. All right. Yeah. Because I was like, wait a second. And for a second, I thought they well, stole the, it the from first him. One was, the first one was a different um, actor. The Ninth Circle. It was called the first oh, one. Okay. And this one was like, I mean, I don't, it's very hard to find it. You, you, it's not super easy to find, but if you find not it. Not on Shutter then. No, not on Shutter. And it's, okay. it's very, it's, you know, very primitive on the everything except for the special effects that they did. And it was very low budget. And, but it was, it's, it's, you know, cool because it's the first one. It's the first one where they show him. And then the next one, All Hallows Eve, they show him again. And it was like, holy shit, like, wait, wait a minute. This is like super creepy. And then the Terrifier came out. And then yeah. it, was, it was a while before. I like, like that you know the whole history of it. Thank you for that. That yeah, way yeah. I'm able to follow it. Oh, uh, walking uh, like I don't want to concern so, yeah. anybody, but Rob is fully disassociating with us. Oh, no, forget. Yes. He's, he's well, just... I'm researching. Piss off. <laughs> you for a minute, Rob, you were just like this. He's producing. Yeah. Let him produce. Oh, I think we're producing, producing right now because producing we're, we're doing the chat. So hi guys. Yeah. He's whispering in my ear, telling me what to say. Don't worry. <laughs> nice. The voices Got don't make much right now. <laughs> okay. Well, the next thing we want to talk about because uh, I know this has caused a stir <laughs> everywhere, but uh, COVID and masks, and uh, we, we're not necessarily going to get political about this. But I know what Orange County Commissioner has said about Megacon, and I know they're mandating everyone needs to wear masks, and people are not getting refunds if, you know, if they don't like wearing masks, and it's just been a whole big thing. So I want to throw this out to the roundtable here and, you know, what that's going to mean for Spooky in October. What do they think that means? Well, I have, I don't know how much I can reveal for this, but it is going through the line of all of your haunt events that this year again, after your behind the scenes creators have done tons of makeup looks and possibly purchased all of their airbrush makeup that we are now fully back into masks. That is the new mandate and it will last until 2022 um, from what I have heard going across the theme park world. So that's Disney, that's Halloween Horror Nights, that's Hallow Scream. I'm hearing that up, down, left and right masks are back in operation. Um, And it is a huge pivot for the makeup team because it's giving them less hours, especially if they do separate makeup and costume. Um, so I have some thoughts and prayers for that for everybody. Uh, my only real slightly political thing I can say about not wanting to wear the mask and not wanting to get vaccinated is a lot of the people who are doing this are those, no fear, I have no fear about jumping out of a plane and fucking fingering a shark and doing all this. But then they're like, oh, but a vaccine I'm afraid of. And I'm like, okay, what, how, how do you align those two beliefs in one person? And the irony being none of these motherfuckers have um, polio or smallpox or because measles. we were vaccinated as children or mumps and they went to school and they yeah went to school, right because and guess what you need for school guess yeah, yeah vaccines so we, i think we, it's we funny that this box. this is yeah. the hill they are quite literally going to die on and um yes. at this point i'm fine with them dying and that is my entire take on it well i mean the one thing that i will put out there is a lot of times you know uh and i and i i'm not a fan of megacon as you all know but this has nothing to do with the people at Megacon making you do anything. This is the convention center. This is Orange County Commissioner. This has this is all up the chain, and they have to adhere to whatever the state and you know uh, county guidelines are. And the same goes for Spooky. Doesn't matter what PD and Gina and Dina and all, it doesn't matter what they want. They have to adhere between. Uh, the Hyatt, between Orange County, they have other people they have to deal with. So it's like, if you want to take your fight, oh, I don't want to wear a mask, you know, talk to your county commissioner, talk to them. Don't leave PD and Gina alone because they have, they just got to go along with it or else they don't get a con. Better yet, instead of talking to those people, suck a gun, just put it in your mouth and pull the trigger. That's the best thing you can do for all of us. (laughs) And yeah, I'm going to take that statement because I'm so fucking sick of this 
I love you, Rob. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we all appreciate you. I love it. I love it. You, you drink was a little we all think. than I expected. Um, I mean, listen, so. I'd be okay if it was like like last time. Last time was, was fine. You know what I mean? Like we we went, we did our thing, we had our mask on, we we enjoyed the con, we we met celebrities, we talked to artists, and everything was masked on. It was safe, and we hung out outside, and you know, it's just I don't know, it's a slippery slope, I guess. You know, just. Well, one of the things that was brought to my attention this evening is some of our spooky family has actually caught COVID and some of them had died from it. Some of them have been in the ER and it's like, okay, you know what? We talk about spooky family, but when it comes to the pandemic, let's not just think about us. Let's think about those that are around us, you know? And, and that's one of the things And I heard that like someone that is at spooky regularly apparently is in the ER now because of COVID and I didn't get the name and it, it doesn't matter. But it's at, at what point do we stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking about everybody else? I mean, how much does it take to wear a mask? And here's the thing, we're at a convention, you know, and a lot of you are cosplaying to begin with. Yeah. Just the, makes the, sense. The good you thing wear masks is anyway. for Spooky, we're going to have enough warning that we can do costumes and integrate a mask into the costume. Like if you saw, we did we did the um, apocalypse at the last one because I wanted to have it a looks mask. looks great. You I'm gonna so have good. a mask on. I'm gonna make it part of the costume and make yeah, it as well. Get creative. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and we've seen it. Um, we were watching, I don't know, we watch a lot of YouTube, and somebody was at some convention, or I think it was like Days of the Dead or some shit like that. And they were having a costume contest or something to that effect, and they were going down the line. And every single costume in the line was something that had a mask on. And it was like, awesome. oh, man, that's fucking cool. You know what? Sometimes yeah. you have to break out of that, like, hey, I'm gonna do this thing. And oh shit, I have to conform to this rule now cool awesome put it as a part of your your fucking get up you know what i mean like that how creative can you be really let's let's see right yeah i i couldn't agree more but i mean i think this is a discussion that needs to be had because spooky is on the horizon and this is something that's very controversial right now and i'm already seeing yeah. comments on spooky's page about oh why are you what's the mask mandate you know and just they have nothing to do with it you know yeah and, it's out yeah. of their control and people aren't considering that any of these conventions are happening they have to have insurance in order to run and if the insurance pulls they can't run and then they lose everything they lose yep. their deposit they lose all this different money so they have to adhere to it so that they don't have to close down exactly not only, not only that but they may lose that venue and for pd as you guys know sometimes it's hard for him to get venues because <laughs> we get kicked out of so many places well hence, also microsoft so swoops in and steals it hence or why we're in Tampa for one year <laughs> exactly yeah okay <laughs> but uh, but yeah so that's something that we wanted to bring up and i'm sure we're going to be having the discussion multiple times before the convention but it's, just, it's, it's just play along wear it don't complain yeah. if you really are that upset it's by really it. not that big of a deal let's be honest guys we're gonna Look, be dealing with this shit for at least five years in in total five years i mean let's be honest you know what how it looks long like now. that's how long the plague lasted that was you know from the start to kind of like the end of it, it mm. we have to get settled and we have to get comfortable with the fact that this is going to be around for a while vaccination or no or no vaccination and vaccination and then plus other variants and plus breakthrough cases and all that shit it's just it, part of life now guys so robbie did you see in the chat um reg i think or i think yeah. that's how he says it. he says three conventions have canceled and moved to 2022 at the orange county mm -hmm. center yeah, yeah, I was no, not I aware of that. I was not aware of that either. There was a big Game wow. of Thrones convention. Uh, it was supposed oh. to take place, I think, this weekend. Who still yeah. cares about Game of Thrones? <laughs> I've never seen anything die in the zeitgeist that fast. <laughs> oh my God. I, 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 I like season eight. I don't give a shit what anybody no, says. I love it. I, I thought it was great. Oh, and they're also doing like a spinoff, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they the Targaryen cool. spinoff, right? Yeah. It's going to be the prequels. Uh, it's going to be set a thousand years before Game of Thrones. Damn, I'm here for it. I mean, the no, that's before they head into the plumbing. They, so they did really have that then. They, I think they they really brought a lot of um uh, income and and all that to the areas where they filmed it in Ireland and other places in the world. Bosnia, they're like you know what? They're bringing fucking revenue. I mean, why not? You know, did you say Bosnia? Yeah, no, no that's what Bosnia. they filmed. Oh, yeah. A lot I of it was actually filmed in Bosnia. That's awesome. In Spain, actually, I think that back Serbia. Oh, okay. Serbia, you know, right. that's just right. cool. yeah, no, same same neighborhood, same neighborhood, yeah, just right next door. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, so um, and uh, one of the things, and that getting off the the mask subject, 
you know, we've been meaning to talk about this for the last couple shows, but we haven't gotten around to it. Let's talk about Rob Zombie's monsters. Let's just no, let's out not. there. Uh, I, I want I, I to believe. Like we're have a divided here, so. See, to me, in my head, Lily Munster is literally you. I don't think of yeah. the character. Yeah. I don't think of the the actress. Bless her heart, she was amazing in the show. I don't think of her. She I think of you, her. and I'm like, Sherry Mom. Moon can't do Demi. What are we? Yeah. <laughs> do not make me fucking cry on air. It's what's well, true. It's true. You're you're my Lily. That's me. Um, okay, I'll just go first. Look, I don't like the idea. I've stated it a billion different ways. It's a comedy. They've hired a, a hardcore horror director who's, you can, I'll give Rob Zombie. He's a horror director. He's made his way. He's made a number of successful horror movies, whether you like him or not. He mm -hmm. has that card stamped. Now he's remaking a sitcom. And I don't want a, I don't want a scary, hardcore, more extreme, edgier monsters. Fuck that. The monsters was like the most wholesome show ever. Okay. Um, no, and hold on. And my one last point on this. He got brought in, unfortunately, because the fact of the matter is, in this day and age, more people know who Rob Zombie is than they know who the monsters are. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 especially for people who are under 30. Absolutely. They have no clue that's who fair. the monsters are. Yeah, that's fair. Think about I didn't even that. think of that, yeah. I know. Think with Geritol. But think about this. The Rob Zombie is the kind of guy who watched the monsters who turned him into what he is today. Exactly. So, Agreed. Imagine, imagine getting to recreate your childhood love and bring it to life. I think he's going to use this as a as a way to kind of bridge a gap and not just do horror, but do some comedy in there and make it kind of because I mean, three to hell has some comedy parts in there. Three to hell is funny in a lot of parts. So or not three, three, uh, not three to hell. Three from um, hell. Yeah. yeah, three from hell. It has comedy in it i think he's going to bring a certain type of comedy i don't think it's going to be the slapstick comedy that the monsters had from back in the day but i think he's going to be able to bridge that gap and i think he's going to make it fresh and fun i'm excited i no, think so he yeah. wouldn't have put his wife in the damn role that i don't like did I, we officially I, see that that's 100 percent that she is it, Lily? it is, it is they, no they, they've announced the cast the casting for her and for herman Who's Herman? Who's playing Herman? That mean, black haired guy who's in a bunch of his films. I can't remember his name. Jeffrey Daniel Phillips. Oh, yes, oh my God. yes. Okay. <laughs> no. Debbie just, pulled it out of her back pocket. Let no, me read this for you. That's what I do. No, but see, I will agree with Eric on one point. I do believe that Rob Zombie does have that underlying sense of humor. Mm -hmm. For those of you that have been around Spooky for a very long time, some of you might remember, uh, and I know Rob remembers this. I think it was back when it was Scream Fest. They had a uh, uh, Devil's Rejects or what was it? House of a Thousand Corpses reunion in the bar. And we were talking to him and they were talking about how Rob Zombie was playing disco and, you know, and just, so yeah, he has that sense of humor and I get that. And I'm, I'm okay with that, but the casting, no. Bob, and, so angry. And the costumes see, look great though. The costume oh, sketches I've seen, they are stellar. I saw what they're doing with Lily's dress and they're doing this cheap, like hot topic looking spider fabric. That you it can, didn't like, look get... cheap the drawing i saw it didn't look cheap at all it looked like it was I handmade saw the material and it looked like shit it looked like something mm. like spirit halloween that's what i saw all right so You'll let's, have to see, send it let's to me. see let's see what happens when it fucking comes out i mean this oh, is well you know robbie right robbie now. you know i'm a fan of rob zombie films you and yeah. i both are usually on the page with that I, i'm I, a fan of some of his films i haven't the only one i didn't like was the last um house of a thousand Cor <gasps> corpses i felt okay. like I felt like it pulled punches. I felt yeah. like it wasn't as hyper violent oh, as the meant, previous like the original two. House of Thousand no, Corpses. No, no, I love no, House of a Thousand Corpses. The third movie in the franchise sure. I felt was very one note. Yeah. yeah, and I agree. Yeah, I loved the second one because it was a hyper violent one too. I had a so, hard time with Salem's Lot, but if I could cast one person in there, I would want Marilyn to be Samara Weaving. Who? Was oh, she's so to... good. If they picked her for Marilyn, I'm sold. I will watch it hands down. Marilyn's got to be boring as hell. That's what she's there for. No, she doesn't. She, she yes, was she not boring. That's true. No, she rides in balance. Yeah, I, she I was. She was absolutely a balance. She wasn't boring. I liked her character. because She was mm -hmm. like, you know, she was like independent for the time, especially. And she was like, fuck, uh -huh. she grew up in a like super and, diverse family. And she was Yeah, she was like, very accepting of, of different people because yeah, of her family. I liked her character. Yeah, for sure. And she had a little bit of a, 
you know, deep down psycho side, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. And pinup queen. Absolutely. Yeah, queen. Which is totally Samara right. Weaving would be perfect for that. That's I, love Samara I, Weaving. Grandpa, I think Grandpa's still my favorite character in that whole. See, and that's the whole thing. I think Sid Haig would have been perfect as Grandpa. I, yeah. I, I agree. That's probably the original plan, you know. I picked Dennis yeah. O'Hare and Rob made fun of me. Yeah, probably. No, I didn't. I didn't make fun of you. I just said <laughs> you he, said you can put him in anything, <laughs> and, and that's true. You can put Dennis O'Hare in anything. He, Dennis he, he, would make a good Lily. Yeah. That is true. I actually like that. <laughs> What's the guy's name? Oh, please, I'm so awful with names. Um, he plays. He's in the American Gods. The older guy. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. He's the uh, Shane. Shane, right? Uh, Ian, Ian Shane. Yeah, Shane. yeah, Ian yeah. Shane. yeah. He's he would awesome. Be a good grandpa. Well, he would be a good grandpa. He would be a good grandpa. Yeah, that voice because he, he and he's very funny too. Because as yeah. Wednesday, he was very funny. Oh, yeah. That, you know what? Just talking about American Gods makes me sad. Uh, I agree. The book oh, and Rob, today you're like out of sorts, man. You're over there all like <laughs> he's in a thousand yard <laughs> stare. <by> <laughs> He's literally okay. in a movie theater by himself. Yeah, yeah. which is the dream right now during COVID. Himself. That's you. true. Yeah, that's where I want to be. The, the opening night of like the last Godzilla movie, not King Kong, but before that. Oh my god! There you go. He's got his buddy. Oh He's got his buddy Joe. Oh, that's Joe better. Got it. There we go. You better right now. The opening night of Godzilla was fucking yeah, fantastic. This will make me more, make me more positive like, and upbeat. There we go. He got his prison right. sentence commuted. Did he really? No way. No. Well, what they what they said, not not by much. Let's not say he's going to be out tomorrow. Um, okay. No, basically what they said was they they couldn't charge him for like two because th- th- he got charged for two versions of the same crime. Uh, where yeah, only one could apply. So he's still got like eighteen years to go. Yeah, all right. Oh, wow. Okay. He's not going to make it. Bless his heart. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's not. He's probably uh. having fun though. He's probably got a boyfriend going on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay, so Rob, we have another person saying you've never been this quiet on the cast, uh, on the live cast, and I think you have been before. But all right, you know what? <laughs> Fuck all y'all. Right? I, or, or do you want me to talk more? I don't know. Yeah, we, that's what they want. They want you to talk more. You're just so contemplative tonight. Pe- people are worried about you, I guess. I guess there's going to be an intervention. You know how you get that thing like that <laughs> Facebook sends you? It says, are, don't commit suicide. And they give you the 1-800 right, folks, number. You're going to get that problem. after this. That's hilarious. I'm really low on rum and gin. So that's if you want to support me and have me more talkative. But also, drop up there. We need to cash up up. Yeah. Rob is usually more talkative because he's usually monitoring the chat. Yeah. So if he can't monitor the chat, he is not talking as much. This isn't Rob is upset or we're taking over Rob's spot. He asked Robbie and I to monitor the chat. The, the other half of this is this has been a very costume centric podcast or webcast. Yeah. And he, That's he's not a- really what I have any familiarity with. You did get a compliment on your beard, and I do say, agree it's quite fetching. Yeah, I agree you have the best beard because ever. Beard looks I, good. I, I agree. That cut looks good. I thought that as well. Maybe I thought maybe that's why you were sad. Like you missed your hair or something. No, it's Rob is sad. It's okay, dude. Oh, uh, you know what? Thank you all for the love and concern. Yeah. Oh, you know they to make you off the ledge. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at love it. All right, so <laughs> Eric's Eric's uh, status update is going to be like saved a life tonight. Yeah, <laughs> Boy, it was, it was <laughs> touch and go. I had to use all my marine training to bring him back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Just get in the Liz outfit and dance for us, and we'll be right. super happy. Oh man, I want a Liz striptease. Yes, I want a well, Liz striptease. I want Liz to literally do the "Would you fuck me?" If, I'd fuck <laughs> me. If you all want it, we'll try to make it happen. Oh, Matt says your beard is not as good as his, Rob. So I don't know if that's fighting words he's, and beard no, world. No, 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 or... no, that's called jealousy. That's jealousy. No, that's, 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 good, that's a fair good. and honest review. Matt that has a good. very nice beard. He does. He's got a good beard. Yes. And they fucking kicked ass this weekend, by the way, at Sharkon. And yeah. I just want to say big up to fucking Big Show. Congrats on that, guys. I saw the, the, the mugs. Did, you, did any mugs make it back? I, I don't know, know they, but they were like in view of like Richard Dreyfus, the entire yeah. fucking convention. Oh, so. sure. oh he showed up to that. Richard that. Dreyfus showed up to that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Shark Con. Oh, oh. Shark. <laughs> I guess we should have had a bigger boat. 
Danielle says that she's stopping by just to say that she, that uh, she'd fuck you. I mean, or she'd fuck me, or I don't know, or I'd fuck me, whatever yeah. that means. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, would you fuck me? 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 I'd fuck me. She's doing Buffalo Bill. I love it. Yeah, it's an orgy tonight. What are you gonna do? <laughs> All right, you so know what? Just topic. as a quick note, uh, it's just regarding Buffalo Bill, um, yes. our buddy, our buddy Chris, who is the owner proprietor of uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill's house. That's that good. Just Buffalo Bill's house. He will be uh, coming back on the show in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, great we guy. Having, He's yeah. They're looking to open Labor Day weekend. Sweet. Fingers so crossed. excited for them. Yeah. So we, well, and we will... if you if you follow Buffalo Bill on any social media, you've seen some of the art they're adding to the house, some of the renovations, everything they're doing to prepare for it, and it's fucking outstanding. True horror fans, right there, yes. absolutely. Oh, we loved having him on the show because it wasn't mm-hmm. just like some guy trying to promote something. He's an actual yes. horror fan and was totally getting into it like we were. Hell, that, but the guy knows so when it. when he does. Show he up, does. Up, Damn. When, when he shows up, we're gonna you know obviously we're gonna talk a lot about about the his his B and B again. Yeah. But we're also going to go on a very just hardcore movie episode because he, the guy knew like just, he, he again, super horror movie fan. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, which is fucking awesome. But I just speaking. want everyone to know that uh, Danielle and Eric have agreed to dress uh, Eric back up as Liz and do the would you fuck me, I'd fuck me dance. And now happy birthday to me. That's what I feel like. Uh, that's our Christmas gift and oh, yeah. everything. Just remember, you right. all asked for this. Okay? I'm so yeah psyched about i this. just want this ahead of time you guys asked for this oh yes. and matt matt oh, yes. said he'll be announcing his special spooky mug soon nice so that, that's exciting i'm excited good that's fucking awesome because i need to add to the collection okay next thing we're going to talk about we have seen i we've seen rumblings about this uh those of you that are american horror story fans you know all about the series that's on hulu now uh we're going into another jeffrey Dahmer biopic which personally i don't think we need uh with evan peters okay so he did a great job i hated cults but he Mm -hmm. did an excellent job of mimicking each cult leader he must have listened to every jim jones recorded everything i mean he nailed jim jones and Mm -hmm. i thought he did a really good charlie which is pretty easy if you just act schizophrenic um yeah. So yeah, it's I I don't hate the idea, but I do. Rob is chomping at the bit. A little bit. A little Go bit. ahead, Rob. Well, no, well, no, no, well, I'm done. I'm done. I don't I I don't have a, a a Charlie Manson you know monologue prepared, and I really would want to do it justice. So I can. Well, you just gotta say bit. helter skelter and boopity gookity zoopity do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, and it's, I've memorized parts of his interviews and stuff because I'm that weirdo that is seriously into serial killers. I am a massive serial killer fan. So yes, I need to buy the last killer. podcast on the left book for you then. It's okay. a serial killer book illustrated. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. And there have been some amazing actors that have done, that have transitioned beautifully. Uh, for example, you never would realize it, but Carrie Elwes, you know, Princess Bride and everything, he did an amazing, an amazing uh, Ted Bundy. Yeah. Fuck Zach Efron, all that shit. No, he was Which so one was that? Because I've seen another one that didn't have him in it that also did a good job. It was from the late It was called movies. The Riverman, I think. The River, the River yeah. And it, it, the movie itself, not very good um no, but movie, his but performance it, his fantastic. performance alone is worth it um you know I and mean, you all know about steve rails back i mean he is the epitome of charles manson let's be honest um but see evan peters he's a good actor he's good at what he does he's great in his x-men movies he's good in american horror story we had to see evan peters you know when it comes to jeffrey dahmer we've had so many actors that have done jeffrey dahmer already and in my opinion the only one that's done it well Oddly enough, is Jeremy Renner. Yeah, because they've been boring, honestly. I felt like they were very flat noted, um, except yeah. for Jeremy Renner, who I'm not a huge fan of. But you are right. The ones that have been made of Jeffrey Dahmer have been very boring. I personally want an Ed Gein movie, but. Yeah. I'm well, there, there there ready for that. that Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's inspired by him, right? It is, but uh, there's there's actually Last Podcast and Left is releasing a comic book called What Ed Ge- Eddie Gein Did. And I nice. can't wait to read it. Demi, before you said Jeremy Renner, I thought you were going to say the best person who did Jeffrey Dahmer was Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> true. I mean, true. Nobody plays Jeffrey like Jeffrey. That's true. Okay, that's Kitty true. Kitty just told me the guy from NCIS played Bundy too, and that's probably the one I saw that was actually really good. 
Which guy from NCIS? I don't know because I saw it one time on late night television. And I was like, this is so good. But it was a lot of sex. Like they really focused on the sex yeah, with the did. dead lady. I, yeah. I, and with that. his wife and, and, and like him just like fucking the girl and going like, fuck you, bitch. And it was really weird, but very yes. uh, enthralling. I'm into it. I'm into it. But that's the whole thing. What a lot of horror directors forget now is that these serial killers are not supposed to be appealing. You know, everybody oh. that go in all with about uh, Richard Ramirez and oh, he's hot and sexy. His teeth, no. his teeth. Thank you. No. It smells like poo. I can smell it just yeah, from looking at him. These, and they said these Mark people, Harmon, they? that's who played Ted Bundy. Thank you, Matt. Mark Harmon, really? Apparently that's what he said. You know, for the record, I'm a huge fan of summer school. That's a great movie. Classic. Yeah, exactly. So also featuring a uh, regular spooky attendee, Shawnee Smith. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's very true. But yeah, I'm just sorry. Evan, Evan Peters is no, he needs to stay away from Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm sorry. Just we've said everything we needed to say about Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. There's so many other serial killers out there that deserve their time in the limelight. Absolutely. He's well, not it, we just need to, the problem is the same thing that you, that you guys brought up about Rob Zombie being more known than the Munsters. All of the other serial killers we're thinking of, they're out of the public uh, zeitgeist with everything because they're sure. too old. People don't know them unless you're a fan, so they're not marketable, so they're not going to get produced. I'd love to see something on Carl Panzer, personally. And and can, oh, my God, Panzer. Uh -huh. um, exactly. Yeah. What, what about Albert Fish? Are Thank you. That, that was Albert. super fucking upsetting. Well, the fucking Ramirez kid is super fucking popular right now after the Netflix thing. I know. Just so, yeah. true. You know? So upsetting. Yeah. I wish they would bring Mine Hunters back on. That was a great show. I, oh, God. I'm so, so sad mad I got they canceled. canceled. It was so good. Yeah. Well, that? the fact that Ed Kemper was still alive and kicking. I, is he still alive? I think he is. Last I checked, I like so. a couple months ago, he was still alive and he's a giant. Mm -hmm. um yeah ed kemper did some really fucked up shit and i don't think there's maybe he, they can't do a movie about him because he's still alive and he has to give his rights i have no idea oh, oh i think he would want his rights out there I think he would love it. yeah so yeah, i don't no know problem. maybe they don't want to give him that satisfaction like what's her name yeah. the teacher who fucked a bunch of kids she wasn't allowed to pose in playboy yeah maybe oh, it's okay. one of those things but rob you were saying about ed kemper just just that he would love it that's all yeah, no, he's a guy that absolutely loved the attention. This is a guy that befriended the police who were investing his uh, investigating his case before they even caught him. He he would yeah. have gotten caught. He only yeah. got caught because he told on himself. He was exactly. like, "All right, you guys, you guys are taking he too long. Let me let me speed yeah. this up." Yep, absolutely, All absolutely. Right. All right, well, well, no, um, what you call it? the uh, uh, we have the, uh, the haunt that you wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, let's we'll save that for next one because I don't. Do you okay. have to go there's the Oviedo Scream, and just for anyone in the, the east side of Orlando, there is a haunt that's going to be around the Oviedo Mall, I believe. Yes. Um, it's I think a, it's, it's called Scream and Scream. But with paintball guns, so I'm not really sure. I don't even think it's I mean, paintball guns. Or maybe it's laser tag it's guns. It's laser. Paintball yeah. guns is Scream again. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. This is more of a, like a, yeah, this is basically where you just drive through and then you shoot zombies in your car. Yeah. Clowns and zombies. It's curious. Not really <laughs> sure of the pandemic, but no, we will do an episode on haunts, and we've had the pandemic will uh, affect them because that's yeah. Let's get a little bit closer so we know exactly what the fuck's going on, right? Because that's who knows what's going to fall off now. So I mean, I think the only thing that's like uh, for sure, go go go, is Halloween Horror Nights. Well, that's even that, I'm a little worried because last year they pulled back, and they've already spent so much money on sets. Yeah. Um, I'm working with some teams that are building some of those sets and they look, you know, uh, incredible. Oh, but for you guys that are in the haunt industry, how close to the event do they pull back? It's going to depend. Do, like, a week before because it's about to start. I mean, they could. I mean, remember crazy. last year they, they sneaky put up a house that I didn't know about, the Beetlejuice house, and yeah. they, they had pulled it, had actually dismantled some of the sets and then re put them back together. So, with somebody who has a budget like Halloween Horror Nights, they can literally do whatever the hell they want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's like that, that you know, you have that, that ball rolling, right? It's so, a whole machine that's just yes. rolling and rolling and rolling. And I will tell you on the smaller end for us, the only thing that would shut us down because that ball is rolling uh, is if the country shut down again, right? Exactly. Like it did. That's the only thing that would stop us from going live this year. Oh, man, it's 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 nerve wracking. Just the the waiting and just every day it's something different and it's absolutely nerve wracking. Yeah, 
Right. Well, uh, one of the things that we definitely want to talk about, we have seen some of the posts and we always forget that there's a totally new generation that is coming to Spooky, that we always forget that, you know, they don't really under, which is why we started this webcast to begin with, to kind of, you know, vet you guys in. Um, some of the posts are very amusing. Um, one of the ones that we saw was uh, someone asking to bring their cat to Spooky. Eh? <laughs> it wasn't me. No, no, it was not you. Um, that no, this is not a, a, a con you you bring your pets to. I, I remember uh, last time we were at the Hyatt. I want to say it was 2018, and Rob can correct me if I'm wrong. There was a, a regular there that had brought his snake, and they were not allowing him to bring the snake in. Now, Brandon, he at the window. The window, anything goes. That's just that's what the window is. You can but, bring a crack cord to the window, and it's perfectly yeah, fine. Be fine. But the Hyatt, oh. right across from the convention center on iDrive, they're not, you're not bringing your pets. I don't care what kind of service animal you have, emotional support, lizard, whatever. Just so you know, they're not letting you bring your pets. Yeah. This is it's not a hotel. Bird, this, no this hotel and this convention, it's all indoors this time around. There's no outdoor areas. So yeah. just leave the kitty at home. I mean, yeah. we. I it's so stressful know. for the animal too. Like, it is. And what are I you had doing? I bring my dog to the Wyndham because her boarder couldn't couldn't take her at the last. That night. was an emergency situation, and, and we didn't was, bring her. And event. you know what? But she did not have a good weekend, and I, you know, we brought her home as quickly as possible. But that's still at the Wyndham where there's lots of outdoor space. It was very easy to take her out. She she was good in that case. This is not the case. Wait, the bring house. your goddamn guinea pig. Nobody cares. Yeah, seriously. Bring the guinea pig if someone brings a snake. Oh, isn't there a lady who always brings a parrot on her sally yeah. am i making that up no no, no you're right okay. yeah, no, I, I think there is but yeah I, it, her on Facebook. I forget. yeah the hyatt does not allow animals so don't even go down that road yeah. um the other thing we saw and i think i understand why this is a little common now because the pandemic has left the dating scene a little unstable i guess so there was someone that was actually posting that he wanted a date come to spooky now we know a lot of couples have met because of spooky spooky because some people have gotten married because of spooky so it was just kind of interesting seeing someone asking for a date to spooky because on one hand you're like oh this is not oh wait yes it is a hookup con hmm <laughs> so uh, it's just it's not like dragon people. con where craigslist is just like i'd like to fuck a guy dressed like robin or ash <laughs> see um, now that's that's something we could offer at Spooky. That would be really interesting, actually. Are you starting a brothel? You and Rob? <laughs> a horror brothel? <gasps> I I actually think I th Rob's eyes just lit up. <laughs> Rob, you could do the accounting like a boss. You'd be you'd be making oh, mad yeah. money. You know what? Some of us are creative. Others of us understand law and accounting. And you know what? <laughs> the world needs both of us. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's why you Someone guys are a dynamic duo. <laughs> yeah. The yin and the yang. Yeah, but, the, but yeah, I just I found it was really interesting that someone actually posted on the uh, I don't remember if it was the event page, but they wanted a date to Spooky. So we want to put I, it out there. Um, I found it awkward, to be perfectly honest. That's the kind of thing I threw out in chat rooms when I was 20. And this guy is a lot older than 20. Um, I didn't look at his profile or anything. But... Uh, he was he's in his at least 40s, if not 50. Um, Lockdown's got people being squirrels. And, and that's something I, I haven't I got to keep in mind. It's yeah. We've we've forgotten how to socialize correctly. Exactly, exactly. But just just throwing it out there, saying, "Do any ladies want to be my date at Spooky?" That's not going to get you anything. No. Nope. Now, as a modern day Lothario, I, I know a little bit about the ladies. <laughs> that's oh. that's that's not going to work. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that we just thought that was really interesting. So if any of you ladies are looking for a date, apparently that's something that's on the table. And maybe it's that's just how we're doing it. Ladies only, though. It is true. This is true. I don't know. I don't know. You, you know what? And maybe perhaps in a future episode, we will discuss actual in more detail dating and uh, hooking up and heck, even relationships based at Spooky. That, that we should do the something. dating game. I was just saying we could do that, or you know, or even um, we could offer, uh, and we maybe we'll do a panel on this. But horror speed dating, 
I, the, the dating game I, at Spooky would be amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I, there, I, there has been a lot of speed dating at other conventions, and I will tell you this: it bombs almost every time. That's there's okay. like two girls. There's two women. One of them is the organizer, and then it's like fifty guys. <laughs> Okay, not to go off on a tangent, but has anybody watched Sexy Beast yet on Netflix? Okay, I saw that and I was like, is this a furry thing? And then I saw the trailer no. and I was like, okay, a little different. But it is different and it, it it's like Jerry Springer meets the furries. Yep. So basically, <laughs> three people, they all dress up in FX costumes and yeah. they meet, they go on a date and then they get to meet each other and kind of get to know each other and then each round he knocks somebody off and then he gets to see what they look like without the makeup on. It's very shallow. It's very lowbrow, but it's, of course, it's entertaining. Still. Okay. okay. Now I, Demi, this is for you. Craig in the chat says, well, number one for hooking up at spooky, wear deodorant. Thank you, Craig. God, yes. Absolutely. Well, all, sit to the skies. Condom yeah. first. Just all the time. Condom always condom be ready. First. Just have yeah. it on your plastic. Yes. That's- Seriously. Yeah. Prioritize. Oh, no, absolutely. Now, like I said, yeah. and then the whole- And movie- Michael says to wash, Michael, our Michael, says to uh, wash your genitals. Well, you, you and know I what? agree. Who think that's a given, but I mean, there was a, a, oh, no, I, I can, I can, no, it's not. I've been through there some horror stories. There was anything think- on Reddit, and um, it was Martha Stewart. And someone asked Martha Stewart for a sex tip, and she did it. She gave it to them. And she said, always wash before and after. Right mm-hmm. there, that's- Okay. Bless Martha. Yeah, me. national treasure. You know, it's, it's interesting because the sexual uh, uh, atmosphere at Spooky has gotten really interesting over the past couple of years and because I'm going to share just a little bit of gossip that I heard at the last convention. I'm not going to say who or what or whatever, but apparently um, there was a gentleman that ended up in a room with a bunch of women. And so he asked, uh, he pulled a Louis C.K. and basically said he didn't want any dudes around, but he wanted to jack it in front of the women. God damn it. So oh. this is something that happens. Was Wire, it Louis C.K.? <laughs> what, what, Rob? Was it Louis C.K.? It was not Louis okay. C.K. Okay, just checking. Thought maybe he would have shown up. But this this is something that apparently we do need to address because this is something that apparently happens. Yeah, well, I just yeah. want to also mention that there are plenty of actual working girls in Orlando. So if any of those people who are That's attending true. the con would like to enjoy those services, there's like those flyers at sex shops. Just pick That's one of those true. up, call a lady and get an this escort for the evening. She'll do it for a very lovely, reasonable price. Don't involve random con goers <laughs> oh, with your oh, bullshit. The last, um, the last convention, who was it that had uh, friends at 3 a.m.? Oh, um, oh, Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All just right. do it. Between him allegedly. and the guy from childhood. Allegedly. 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 Because Tom Sizemore is ever going to see this or his lawyers. You know, <laughs> he has friends. Yeah, that's all we're saying. You know, he, he had friends come over at 3 a.m. So, you know what? Maybe allegedly. I, I want to find out if he's a Tom Sizemore or a Tom Size less. <laughs> Oh. I bet you could find out pretty night. easily. He feels like a, a situation of if the bear is hungry, <laughs> he'll eat. This is a topic that we will, we will have to go deeper in, apparently. Uh, at deeper another show, deeper so. and deeper, Rob. We're going, we're going in. We're going in dry. We're, we're, okay. we're going to Tom size more of this. We're going to Tom size most of this and go deeper <laughs> in another show. a drawer or a drawer, though. I mean... All right. The, the, the last thing that we wanted to bring up before we wrap things up, uh, we wanted to talk about Halloween hunting because it is in full swing. Uh, everything from Joann's to uh, Big Lots to at home. Old time pottery. So, old time pottery. So that's the thing I wanted to ask you guys. Where have send you been? Me. What have you seen? Okay. I the other day randomly stopped at ross and they had a teeny tiny section but they have those cast iron wall hangings again and they're only like nine to fifteen dollars and then those super heavy ones that'll just last forever so get them while you can yeah i have some back that hang on a chain yeah i have those too and they have a new one that's a giant moon with a bat and then a bat hanging off of it looks like it belongs to the same family i'm sold okay I got yeah. it for twelve dollars. I need it. Yeah. At, at home always has really great stuff. Uh, personally, I advise against Cracker Barrel because I think everything they do is like they charge at least thirty to forty percent more than other places. Agreed. It had to be something really special. 
Yeah, Big Lots, I think, is one of the greatest places other than at home to get Halloween stuff. Big Have Lots you seen, is- are they out yet, Big Lots? Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. they're going up as they, last week they started stocking. Yeah, Yay. and I do think they're going slower this year for some reason. I'm not, necess- even slower than last year. It <laughs> might be, they might have pulled from stock last year for stuff that was left over, and this year it's still interruption in trade. But my That's concern pretty much what, I think. what happened to us last year was that because of, you know, things get, arriving to the United States and all that, um it look it seems like they put stuff out and then as soon as they sold that's it they didn't like restock or anything like that and sorry just real quick is there a baby in the chat okay oh no it's fine i was just making sure a baby wasn't crying i was like which one of us has a child it's a squeaky toy okay that's fine no you're right they they emptied out and that's a problem target has had for years even before covid they're not they're not producing enough enough merchandise and then stuff is being sold like the first years the sandworm came out he was being sold for three times as much on ebay and that's what they're doing now unfortunately I'm yeah, not didn't, didn't robbie say the skeleton the 12 foot skeleton sold out like a month ago the mm-hmm. first day the first day it came out it was sold that's you know, crazy the, the thing I, is i think in the last five years there's been a huge increase in the amount of people that want halloween decor versus christmas yeah. decor i think it's it's sure. starting to become an even playing field now and they're not used to it and they're they're just not ordering enough yeah, there's there's a big demand. So, but that's the one thing we always do say when it comes to Halloween hunting. If you see something, don't wait and go back because it will not be there. Yeah. One of the things that yeah, one of the things that we wanted that uh, it was at at home and it was like this cool skull, but it had lizards coming out of it, and we're like, oh my god, never I saw it. it. It sold out. I never saw it. It's, it's gone. It's completely mm-hmm. gone. We saw it once and we didn't pick it up and now we're never seeing it. I know, it. but I don't, you know, and it's crazy because it, it, I feel like they haven't stocked their shelves yet because we were at Yeah, I know. Their shelves are huge. Too. Chunks are missing, right? And it's like, what's happened? Like, are they still putting stuff on up mm-hmm. or are they just not going to and whatever sold that's it and, and it's like okay well yeah it's very unclear that's how target has been for the past three time. years you never mm-hmm. know if there's not finished stocking or if it's already sold out <laughs> right for anybody who goes to marshall's there is a small print button-up shirt of pumpkins if you see it get me a medium let me know <laughs> okay Danny, we, we all have me. we all have those things that we're searching for for each other. Okay. Robbie, if I and see I another one of those bats, the, I'll get you one. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Danny, if I go shopping, I'm going shopping at your home because I know I'm going to get some score some good, good shit. I got the inflatable. Well, you buy anything from my house? No, at home. Oh, at home. Yes. No, no, at your home. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Your home. laughs> yeah, you, you'd have to steal this it. This is my shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, go get fight, fight, fight. Dimmy's house is pretty fucking sweet. I love it. I, yeah, that's the Asian Dimmy and Rob's house. Rob yeah. lives there as well. Oh, what? Sometimes. But yeah, the HOA hates us, but you know, whatever. whatever. Fuck them. But uh, what the other big announcement when it comes to Halloween hunting, uh, Michael's is starting to put stuff out again. The thing with Michael's, apparently, they're bringing back the pastel goth thing. Didn't love I, it. I that from last, a lot of us hated it. You either loved it or hated it. But if you like the whole pastel goth thing, they have like the pastel skulls with the flowers. Wow, and- how you really now, do. you know, I will die on the hill that goth girls can wear pink, sure. but I did not like the shade of pink that Michael's used. It was, it was almost like, like cottage baby. core and goth fuck yes, and had a exactly. weird baby. It was, it was definitely baby pink. pink. Um, it was definitely baby no. pink. Yeah, yeah I- not my favorite. Pastel yeah. has its place. It's called Easter. <laughs> Thank you. This is and this what is what was it Morticia said? I could forgive you for all of that, but really, Debbie, pastels. pastels? Yes. Thank yes. you. And I think I actually did that as a TikTok last year, and I'll probably do it again this year because it just I hate and it's so funny because the thing is when you do go in Michaels, you do see all the Beckys and the Karens going nuts over the and it's hysterical to watch. So it's Matt like, had just said nothing's like, at nothing's at Lowe's or Home Depot yet. Matt, you yeah. can actually order it online. Yeah. Everything's Working been online. online for about a month, and the skeleton yeah. at Home Depot gone, like mm-hmm. gone. Home Depot's kicking up their shit this year. Yes, and they're they're Home doing Depot. they're doing a very medieval thing. But I want to get the like mylar and um, metallic pumpkin arc. That's one hundred and twenty dollars. Um, like you can. As far as Home Depot goes, I was there yesterday. And they're clearing their area. Nice. So it's coming. Nice. Not there yet, but they're making the space. That'll be but you can order online if you want. And Target stuff is already up online as well, just in case nobody knew. At least all of their pet stuff is. I've been looking at all the scratch yeah. houses I know for the naked they, kitties. They usually wait until after after the back to school. They wait for day normally, yeah. yeah their yeah. stuff is, there's a bunch of stuff already online for Target. I was sh- shocked. Yeah, I don't know. I, I... I don't. I haven't shopped in Target for Halloween in a long time, and I think it's become, it's become too Karenized for me. 
I just, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the places that I always really like, and unfortunately we don't have them here. The UK seems to get really really cool stuff. Uh, the TK Max, Home Sense. Yeah, yeah which throws me for a loop because the TK Max, and I'm like, you mean TJ Max? What it's is the same company? TK? It's so funny that they change it like that, though. I went to one when I was in London visiting a friend. Same, same. same. It's yeah. the same. Letter better than us. And Apparently, it's, it's you're getting good stuff. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Crazy. Halloween we call it good huge? stuff. They call it great stuff. That's yeah, great. it's not as big as it is here over there. No, they it's don't not. Really much, or they don't really. And I mean, you know, I'm in different. I'm in different like Halloween groups, and you know, I have friends and you know, family and stuff. And you know, people that I know in these groups that are in the UK or Australia or New Zealand, they're like, "Oh my God, fucking Halloween!" And then nobody. It must be so sad. Well, I think I think the place we would see it most, number one, China and Japan have jumped on it huge, huge, yeah. huge, huge. It's a giant market. Like when we have one icon for like, you know, it's Jack for Halloween Horror Nights, they have yeah. like 18 icons in China. It's crazy. But wow. um, it originates from Ireland. So I imagine that would be a really fun thing that would someday think. I would love to do, go yeah, to Ireland for Halloween. They don't do the thing like we do. They don't. They don't. Everything's bigger in America, baby. <laughs> But I agree. I agree. It would be more pure, maybe, perhaps, yeah. being in the motherland well, for that. I think we can all agree, too. When we were kids and we were trick-or-treating, Halloween was a totally different thing. It was much more of a community thing, and it has oh, died down. And now I'm, now we're seeing a bit of a resurgence. Like, I actually had trick-or-treaters last year. I haven't had them in, like, six years. So yeah. it's very exciting to see oh. that kind of coming back. But schools, the bi- Schools did carnivals. They did a high school car- or a Halloween carnival. My yeah. church yeah. carnivals yeah, treat yeah, exactly. yeah. Was, you always had them but i yeah. used to be able to go to big parties like there used to be a giant party in savannah like 10 yeah. years ago and that died off way before covid and i mean they had people who made their own stock around costumes which you know eric you making costumes with danielle and, and everybody else in this chat who makes costumes making a stock around costume is hard as shit because you have to build it up on your shoulders like yeah. that's something i would hire bad moon for i wouldn't build that for myself i'd hire bad moon fx Um, so the fact that people were just doing this, like no big deal in Savannah 10 years ago and throwing their own parade that wasn't put on by the city, but put on by fans who lived in the area that disappeared a decade ago. And that sucks because, you know, you, you want it. And and like, we we love Halloween so much, you know, I think about that when I want to move to different places, it's like, how's the Halloween scene there? (laughs) I think Bobby, I never thought of that. Bless your heart for telling me that. Yeah. I think about that and you know what we can talk about later but you know I'm like thinking about our potential move and I'm like fuck man like is that a thing over there where I want to go and where I want to live like I don't know I don't know that is but if it isn't I'm gonna fucking make it I'm gonna make it happen because if it isn't that means that somebody that can't be the only one yeah absolutely fuck it we'll do it yeah. All, right. all right so yeah so halloween hunting check a lot of the the big stores like michael's and and you know like uh was it lowe's and a couple others this week uh, joanne's has it Joanne's nothing's it. blown me away yet though i haven't seen anything that i'm like me oh neither. my god me but I, I, that does happen i've noticed especially with joanne's you have a really good year and then a me year yeah. and then a really good year yeah so what are you gonna do but yeah so that's that's what's going on with the halloween stuff and especially for those of you that uh like like the rest of us, spooky decor. We don't go just for Halloween stuff. It's like we go house decor hunting. Like 90% of my house is all from like Halloween. Well, I mean, does anybody in this group, I do on top of my normal Halloween decor, like the cheesy. Yeah, look at that beautiful, Robbie. That's all I that. do the cheesy <laughs> Halloween decor. Oh, this is from like the 70s. I have it just hanging out here. It holds oh, all my stuff. And it's like a 70s it? blow mold. It's I love got it. all the cute stuff. I love it um yeah do you guys put extra halloween decor up because i do and in my front yard oh, yeah. i do more for halloween like i go uh, oh my god i love that Robbie. this one's vintage actually i stole this one from me that's so cool i love it well you got that cute little stacked one i think nate got it for you last year from dollar general and your girl went right out and tried to find that and i have it now too I don't know where it is oh, that's fucking awesome all right well we want to thank <gasps> you for, for oh whoops sorry <laughs> oh yeah but how old is that? How many years ago? That's not from this uh, year. Two years? Four, yeah. Three or four years? This yeah, I was like, maybe like three years ago, because I have something. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. I got that. Yeah. Ooh. Right. You set it off with your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I, holler, I holler for Robbie's boobs, too. Woo! Boobies! Boobies! Yes. <laughs> the 
boobies. Oh, and Ashley Gay let us know that the Disney store usually gets some stuff in September and more during October, just so. Yeah, if you like that sort of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed that Home Goods has a bit of a Disney theme this year, so it's like I. I haven't been to Home like Goods yet, but Home Goods, TJ Maxx, and Marshalls are all the same company, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can't get any of that stuff online, so that's part of the fun of Halloween hunting is going out to those actual stores because you're not going to see that stuff online. You can't purchase it online. Got it. All right. Um, well, we're going to start wrapping up here. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, Eric's top three tips for spooky. You know, what uh, new people should uh, consider as they're... As Carly said, hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> hydrate, especially not be in your big costumes. Um, keep a little bag on yourself to fix your costume as you go, whether it's makeup or whatever else, because as you go throughout the day, you're going to have to do touch-ups. And just be respectful of other people in costume. Um, yeah. they, don't, they don't owe you anything. They are not there at your beck and call. Make sure you're polite and ask them, hey, is it okay to get a picture with you? Yeah. Especially if they're eating or drinking, give them a minute. Don't, yep. Or if they're having a really good conversation with a friend. You, though, Eric, are so gracious about mm-hmm. that. I saw people come up. He's a fucking professional. That's why we yeah. have him here. He's a fucking professional. Danielle, too. They're both so great about, yeah, sure, I'll get a picture with you. Well, one of, one of the things that I love and one of the reasons that uh, we wanted to have Eric on is that Eric is one of these people as a costumer that makes the character come alive. And it's like, he's not just wearing a costume. He becomes the Hello, character. Stop. And it's, you slay me. me. <laughs> that's exactly it, Mr. Crypt Keeper. That's exactly what we're saying here. Um, but that that's what makes the entire convention because when we go to the conventions, we're going to escape all this nonsense. And he makes that, you know, people like him make that atmosphere so much better. And it brings you into that bubble and it makes it so much better. Well, so especially if you're- you. Good point, good point, Demi. Yeah, if you're if you're wearing a costume, that's one thing you should consider. Instead of like Megacon where it's just like, oh, cute, I'm Harley Quinn, whatever. Consider becoming the character because it's that great escapism from all that fucking bullshit yeah. that we got to deal with every fucking day. Which is why we all go to Spooky to begin with, right? <laughs> Liz Taylor helped me open I up my I to see you guys. I loved it. Oh, yeah, I bet. I go to see my family. But that's exactly You go with your family to be in that bubble. Yeah. And yeah, people like be in the bubble family. together, guys. Come on. Yeah. Rub your bubbles on me. Mm. That's right. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choke on it there. Not ready for that. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> All right, we want to thank you guys for too. tuning in because I know like some of our castmates have to get to bed early because they're old and you know, that's just what we do. How dare you. <laughs> thank you guys. This I have to draw experience. Santa after this because that's how it works in the haunt industry. You go to Christmas by this time. Well, before Santa. we go, we're going to play one real quick oh. short game of the Rotten Tomatoes game. Okay. And this is the, the Eric edition. These are all oh. from movies that Eric has costumed from. Great. So, and a few of them are stretches, and if that's the case, we'll fuck you. Anyway, uh, number one, 13 Ghosts. 72%. I don't uh, think the original or the remake? If you're talking the, the original, that was what, 1960-something or 70 Yeah, yeah no, no. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. Which one is he talking about? Original talking about Matthew Lillard's version. Yeah, Matthew Lillard. Okay. Well, no, there was one before him. I just want to clarify. I know, That's but what I'm, I'm saying. We're talking about his. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I would say 82. 82. And you think 82 uh, critics liked it. Okay, Carly, you said? 72, and Christina Marie Paz says 74 on the chat. Okay. Robbie? I'm going to go 78. Laura on chat says 83. 71. 71. Rob? 71. 71, yeah. Rob, you can't can't play. Okay, well, then I guess Dementia gets it. 13 Ghosts was rotten at 16%. What? What? No way! See, this is why I quit! Tomatoes and humans. Oh, my God! That go on there and review... Critics were not nice. fans of 13 Ghosts. Oh my. Well, Mike had said 84 and Allison had said 75. And Ashley said I missed yeah. the question. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. Well, I don't watch the critics before those. I go to a movie. Oh my. Yeah, okay. seriously. So, that yeah, movie yeah, holds yeah. up. It's still okay, so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm okay. actually, I got it on my queue. I'm going to watch it in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I got it on my queue as well. So, <laughs> next, and this is kind of in the, in the kind of category Titanic. Oh. <laughs> that one's got like a 
98%. I would say like 102 or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Like, it broke the tomato meter, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many tomatoes in the head. 1999. <laughs> if it was a zombie Titanic movie, it would have been 10 times better. Mike agrees with me at 98% on I'm the chat. 90, yeah. 92. Yeah. No, no, it would be up there. Seriously. Has says 95. Okay. It's got to be up there. I mean, between 95 and 102. One of the highest, it is yeah. like the yeah. highest. It keeps taking over. No, always. That movie. All right. Look, <laughs> no one gets a point then. 89%. Oh. oh. I, I said 90. Oh, 90. Laura, Laura won it. Laura won it in the chat at 75. Okay. Laura 75 won it. Closer? Yeah. Oh, oh, zombie no, Titanic no, was ghost no. ship. <laughs> don't go over. She'd still be too far. So. Ghost ship. You guys. Okay. 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 Next, <laughs> season five of American Horror Story, the hotel season. <laughs> hotel season. 63? I liked it. I liked Hotel. I know Demi hated it. No, I didn't hate it. I liked the first half of it. I'd say 72. I'm going to say 52. I'm going to say they didn't like it. Okay. I, I, I think everybody loves Lady Gaga, so I'm going to go with, I'll say 75. And let's give the chat a second to catch up to us before we call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike says 65. Five. Ashley says 47. Allison says 93. All right. Well, Christina we, says 71. We okay. had one chatter and Carly tie. It was 64%. Oh. It was, it was among the lowest rated seasons of the Yeah, of the It was very stylized, which is what I liked about it. Which yeah, was, no, the art, a whole art that was the biggest fantastic. criticism of it. Oh, people just want more substance. of the same. We all know was Roanoke was fucking garbage. Thank th fucking I could garbage. kiss you through the screen. Please. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay, so here's, uh, I guess, an upcoming one, then Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> uh, I would say that one's probably at, eight, I'd say 81. I say 89 for Thor Ragnarok. 83. 87. Okay. Anyone in the chat? Um, well, somebody said 69, but I think that was for a hotel. I think it's still just waiting for us to catch up. Sure. Uh, 84, Matthew says. 89, um, Ashley says. Mike says 75. I had also said like 89, I think. Uh, Paz says 85, well, 88. Dementia, dementia got this on the nose, 93%. Nice. Oh, wow. Good job. That's right. It was and the most popular of all the Thor films. Yeah. Well, I mean, By just far. Led Zeppelin, just that Jeff alone. Joel Bloom, Tom Hiddleston on a couch together. Danielle, Danielle probably voted for <laughs> just a puddle of Danielle. Yeah. <laughs> and and the last, the last but not least, and again, this is one of those stretches, but Clue. <gasps> oh. Well, we did Clue. We just did we the did, board game version. We did the board game Clue, not the movie oh, Clue. But, we're talk but about Rob really went out of his way. I like I like that Rob picked that. That's awesome. I am going to say it is 82% because I really love Clue. I I loved it, but I think that the critics probably did not. I'm going to say they went with 40, 45%. Well, the thing is, it was judged because it's it's judged by people on, on Rotten Tomatoes. So it was right. judged like 20 years after it came out because Rotten Tomatoes did not exist. Right. No, but they do go back and pull. Oh, they do. Reviews. Yeah. And because Interesting. Not, a lot of that is not hard to find. Like Roger. Oh, Ashley. Say, Ashley yeah. says 37. I love it, though. I'm going to say 87. 80. Nice. Yeah. yeah I was going to say 45 percent, but I, I'm with I'm with Eric on this one. It's going to be low. Found there. 87, yeah. 55. Who did 55? Uh, Allison. Corey. Allison? Well, it's actually 65. Uh, sorry. Hold on. It is, yes, yeah, 65%. Oh, didn't I? Well, no, I said 82. 67 is closer then. So Matthew. Yeah, 69. Okay, Matthew. Yeah, right. yeah, no, it's, it's 69, one of those dude. movies that it's, its reputation has improved over time. Yes, but, it's become more of a cult classic. Flames! Yeah, it's, Flames! It's, on the side of my face! <laughs> so you get the better battle, battle and con voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I right. say that thing all the time. <laughs> So on that note, we're yes. done. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so thank you all very much for tuning in. Keep uh, stay tuned. You know, all sorts of spooky goodness. Blah blah blah. Reconnecting with the spooky fam. Uh, we're gonna be back like I guess next week or whenever. I don't know. Whenever well, whenever they... whenever Chris is available. <laughs> yes. 
Eric, thank you for coming. This was so fun. Thank you, guys. This was awesome. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you. Indeed. And I hope you survive Megacon. Both of us, Eric. Yeah. Let's, let's not die together. Yeah, please. Yeah, die. Seriously. Oh, thank you guys for tuning in and peace.